Hey everyone, Blake here, and we are continuing in our message series called Life Hacks, where we wanted to talk a little a bit about the wisdom of Proverbs. And if you haven't had a chance, go back and watch the previous mini messages. They are phenomenal. And there's so many things that I'm taking away. Even like myself and our family, we're learning little nuggets of wisdom that I've needed my entire life. And I've really enjoyed this message series. But today we're going to talk about something a little bit different. We're going to talk about desire. Now, desire is a really good thing. Desire is something that was created by God. God gave us desires. I love what it says there in Psalm 21 too. It says that God has given man his heart's desire. He hasn't withheld the request of his lips. I love the Psalm says this because God is a good God. He wants us to give us good things. We're created in his image, so we should be able to create and have desires and wants and things that we want to chase after. But desires are also tricky. Desires can also bring us to a place to where they want us to self-destruct. Honestly, this is another thing that James, he says in chapter 1, verse 15, it says, desires, when they conceive, they bring about sin. And sin, when, they're fully, when it's fully grown, it brings about death. So how is it that both desires can be something that are good and they come from God, and at the same time are something that can destroy us? Because here's what we know, and this is what Proverbs 23, which is a really weird proverb. If you read it and you're looking at it, you're like, this isn't something that really like meshes with my life today. But as we read it, we'll dig in and we'll see that truly that our desires that aren't disciplined, those are the ones that end up destroying us. So let's look in Proverbs 23 real quick, and we'll see some of the things that I think we can take away. First, it says this in, in verse 1. It says, when you sit down to dine with a ruler, note well what is in front of you. And put a knife to your throat if you're given to gluttony. And that's kind of grand, that's kind of like godfatherish. Don't crave his delicacies, for that food is deceptive. Don't wear yourself out to get rich. Don't trust your own cleverness. Cast but a glance at riches, and they are gone, for they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. Now let's jump down to verse 17. He's gonna give us some tips that we can use to give some direction to our desires. It says, don't let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. There is surely a hope for you and your hope will not be cut off. Through this proverb, we can start to find a way to develop healthy desires in our life because we've got to realize that if we don't follow what it says that our desires little by little as we continue to chase them, they're going to eat away at us. So the first thing that we need to have healthy desires is definition. We need to define our desires. We need to find the things in our life that we want, and we need to start defining them. Because if we don't, that's where the enemy, or what the teacher calls in Proverbs 23, the ruler, the ruler who's sitting around the table, he's giving you all of these things, but he's not giving them for free. When we sit at the table and we see everything that we crave, we need to note well, it says in verse one, what is before us. So let me ask you this question. Let's take this metaphor and let's bring it into our real life. And we start asking ourselves this, what is it in your life that's laid out ahead of you, that you want to chase, that you want desire, that you have desire for? It's all there. But if you don't define it well, here's what the ruler is going to do. He's going to start putting little lines to bring you back. It's kind of like the guy in the commercial that has the dollar on the fish hook. He's like, ah, 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 not yet. Uh, you almost had it. You almost said, this is the way the ruler likes to act in our life. And he keep, keeps drawing us out into our own destruction using our desires. We've been battling this since the Garden of Eden. Go back to Genesis 3, where Eden, uh, Eve and Adam, they're, they're in the garden, right? And they've got everything they could possibly want. They've got the cool mist of the day. They've got communion with God. They've got the opportunity to be a part of God's good world that he created. Everything they could possibly want. But then the enemy comes up and he's at the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And he uses Eve, Eve's undefined desires to begin asking questions and creating some dissonance in her mind. He says, did God really say that when you ate of this apple or this fruit that you would surely die? At that moment, Eve's undefined desires, what she really wanted, began to, began to create dissonance. What did she really desire? Did she desire what she had? All of these incredible things. Did she and Adam want to stay there where they had those things? Or was that undefined desire that they want to be more like God? Because she didn't have it properly defined, then the, the enemy was able to, the serpent was able to come in and say, surely you're not going to die, but instead you're going to be like God, being able to discern from right from wrong. And so then they took, and that led to their destruction. So what's the lesson that we can learn from that is that we have to know what we're chasing after. 
We have to define our desires. And then we go to the second thing, because a desire defined is still just a desire. You don't do anything with it. How do we begin to move those in a direction that won't destroy us? Well, that leads to the second thing, which is discipline. Now, quite frankly, this is for me and for you, because I'm really bad at this. I'm trying to get better at discipline. It's something that the Lord is calling me into right now in my life, doing the hard things and not just kind of going back to a place of comfort. Because if I'm honest with you, I really just want to sit on the couch, eat a family-sized bag of Lay's potato chips, and watch Netflix. That's all I want to do. But God has called us to more because that desire will destroy us. And so we need discipline. And look what it says in the second verse of Proverbs 23. It says, when you've noted everything that's before you, all that you could possibly want, and the ruler's looking at you and he's waiting for you to take a bite, note well what's before you. And if you're given over to gluttony, and he's not just talking about food here. He's talking about appetites. He's talking about anything in our life that we want more of, that we can't control ourselves in. He says, put a knife to your throat if you're given over to gluttony. What? <laughs> it's like the most, that's harsh. That's awful. How do, how do we even begin to apply that to our own lives? It's about discipline. It's about restraint. He's saying in that moment where all you want to do is just dive in and take everything in the world and you just keep eating and taking and eating and taking and chasing, put a knife to your throat. Step back for a second and say, no, 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 I need to restrain myself because I know that this all comes with a price. And that price is my destruction because the ruler is waiting. He is lying in wait, waiting for us to dive in so that we can continue to chase. So how do we get discipline? How do we begin to, to look at discipline in our lives and add it to our lives? Do one hard thing every day. That's something that someone told me a long time ago and it's something I'm trying to add to my life, something that I don't want to do because it teaches us to move forward in what we're doing. I see, uh, for an example, I have a friend of mine who is helping me run. <laughs> you should see me run, it's really funny. But I have a buddy who's getting me out there. We're training for a 5K. I've never run one. I've always wanted to do one. And so every other day he's calling me. He's like, hey, man, look, let's go. Well, there was one day there was a chance of rain. Not even it was supposed to rain. It was like a 30% chance of rain. And he said, what time do you want to go? I said, well, I think we can go about 7 or 8 if it's not raining. And if he said this, and I will never forget this for as long as I live because I think it's something that we can take away. He says, if it's raining, we run it. And that's just that idea of even in the pain, even in the hurt, even in the things that we don't want to do, we still step forward and do it. Why? Because it builds character. In our lives as believers, as those who follow Jesus, we need both desire because that builds passion and we need discipline because that builds character. And character is the construct that we build around our desires that allows us to bring fuel, right? Think about this. A fire is really nice in the fireplace. It's a really good thing. It brings warmth, it brings heat, it brings calm, it centers us. There's a reason why the fireplace is the center of the home. But imagine if I would have taken that fire and pull it out of the fireplace and plop it on the couch. What happens then? It begins to consume everything. It takes over, there's smoke billowing and there's fire taking over everything. Everything that I once cared about, the things in my life, the possessions that I had, my family, everything is at risk because I took the fire out of the place it was best suited for. It's the same thing with our desires. If we don't have discipline in our lives, then our desires will be like a fire that take over everything. So we need our desires to be defined. We need our desires to also have discipline. But where is that discipline taking us? That's the last thing I want to talk about today, which is about our discipline needs direction. Now, 11 verse 17 of Proverbs 23, it says, don't envy the sinners, right? But in zealousness, chase after the fear of the Lord. That's our direction. What is the fear of the Lord? We've been talking about it a little bit in our Proverbs series of life hacks. What is the fear of the Lord? Well, the fear of the Lord is an active recognition of both God's greatness and his goodness. That God is great. He has given us everything. That he has created the world. He is all powerful, all knowing. We can fear that reverently. But then we also recognize actively his goodness. That he loves us. That he sent his son to die for us. And it's in that direction that we can define our desires, we can put discipline around them and give them a direction, that's where fulfillment comes from, is when we say our, we are directing all of our desires for the glory and the honor and the power of the Lord. So right now I want you to take a few minutes, I want you to reflect on this. What does this mean for you? What's the thing that you crave? Define it well. Find an opportunity to think about it. Talk with friends about it. Send a text out today and say, hey, look, let's go for a run. Build some discipline in your life to build a rhythm of direction and watch how God blesses you 
as he continues to fill your life for his glory and his honor. We love you guys. We'll see you guys next week right back here as we continue to talk about life hacks.